able to keep this kind of resolution, but, but, but it wouldn't make a great deal of difference in our lives except for perhaps increase our wage size by several inches. However, this morning, in contrast, I want to talk about some commitments which I guarantee will make a radical difference in our lives if we will follow through with them. So today, 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 I'm, so today, I want to, I want to talk about, I want to talk about new commitments for the new year. And we have about four, we have four passages of scripture for each one, we've got four points. Each one of these have a different passage of scripture. We'll read them as we get to them, but you may just want to jot them down. Philippians 3, 13 and through 14. Colossians 3, 13. Romans 12, 18. And then Romans 6, 12 and 13. I want to challenge us to make these four new commitments for the new year. Here they are, here they are. We can, we can go take care of our New Year's Day festivities. One, commit yourself to forget your failures. Huh? Nearly 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul gave us this, this advice in, in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Some of you know it. He says, uh, Brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. This advice from God's word has stood the test of time. I don't, I don't know of any uh, more relevant and practical advice for us to start this new year. God does not intend for us to live our lives in prison by our past failures. All of us messed up last year. Huh? Anybody, anybody agree with me? All of us messed up. If you didn't mess up at all last year, then you can just skip this point. But most of us, most of us all messed up. All of us had some failures in some way in the past year. For some of us, our failures are, are painful uh, memories. Maybe you, maybe you, maybe for you it's a memory of a failed relationship. Maybe it's a memory of a wrong decision. Maybe it's a memory uh, as a parent of how you failed your children. Or maybe it's a memory of how we have failed our parents. Maybe it's a memory of how we failed ourselves in some way. God's word is saying that we must not allow ourselves to be bogged down by our past failures. That we are not to, to dwell on our past so that it stops us from moving forward into the future that God has for us. You know, beloved, sometimes we get so bogged down and trapped down and strapped down by our failures and our mess ups uh, that we fail to move forward in what God is trying to do with us. Huh? Anybody agree with me? I think, I think, I think that the start of a new year is a good time for us to, to rise to this challenge. To say to ourselves, I'm not, I'm not going to. To, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, with the help of the Lord, uh, you know, push. I'm going to push through my past failures. I'm not going to be chained by by my past. For the word says in John 836, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you are what? You are free indeed. So no matter what that failure is, if you have gone to the Lord and confessed 
that failure. You have taken it to the Lord and asked the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to help you. And God has set you free. Then you are free from it. So why do you keep allowing it to keep you bogged down? No matter what it is. So 2015 is an opportunity. This brand new year is an opportunity to push past those failures. So God is challenging us today. No matter what failures you have in your life in 2014 or beyond, behind that, God is saying, commit yourself to push past those failures. And then secondly, secondly, commit yourself to give up your grudges. Well, I said, listen to this challenge that the Apostle Paul makes in Colossians 3 and 13. It says, bear with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a, a complaint against another, even as Christ <laughs> forgave you, so you also must do. Did you catch, did you catch the challenge? God is challenging us and, and us directly and personally to give up our grudges. That is, that is what that is what he that is what he means when he says, forgive each other whatever grievances you have, you you know, you may have against one another. What's a grudge? A grudge is a deep ongoing resentment that we cultivate in our hearts against someone else. In other words, in other words a grudge is, is something that you, that we you know that we just we just let it fester in us that we have something against somebody else. A grudge is an unforgiving spirit that leads to, un to, to unforgiving attitudes and unforgiving actions. Beloved grudges are dangerous because they are destructive. Grudges destroy marriages. Grudges break up families. Grudges ruin friendships. Grudges will even split churches. Grudges will mess up our relationship with the Lord. Then, beloved, I want you to know that as we, those when you walk around holding a grudge against somebody for something they said, something they did, whether they knew it or not, and you holding a grudge on that, that mess up your relationship with the Lord. Because you can't be holding a grudge and looking mean spirited and contrary, not speaking and walking over folks uh, just because you got something against them uh, and then think that you got a close relationship with the Lord and that the Lord uh, is pouring out his anointing upon you. It's not going to happen. So if you hold in grudges, on somebody against somebody that you had last year, and you want to feel a, you know, a greater anointing of the Lord in your life, that the Lord has said that you need to commit yourself to get rid of the grudge and let the grudge go. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. We uh, honest uh, enough to admit that that one of the scandals of the church is that. You know, is the, the grudges that Christians hold against one another. You know, that's a scandal about the church. Church folks hold grudges against folks. Huh? Not just Trinity, this is church in general. That's the scandal on the, as, as may say, that's the scandal on the street. Church folks hold grudges. And how do the how do the, how do the world how do the world know that church folks hold grudges? Because we as church folks tell them. We tell everybody we are Christian. We tell everybody we go to church. We tell everybody we know that we love the Lord. And then we turn around and tell them about how we hate that so and so. 
that's up in that church. And what they done to us, or what they said about us, and we can, I can never forgive that person. I ain't ever gonna have nothing to do with them, and they up in the church with you. And you tell them a non-believer. That's how the world know that the church, church folks, hold grudges up in the church. But the Lord is saying to us today that no matter what kind of grudge you have had against somebody, anybody, from 2014 going into 2015, you need to release that grudge. I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely certain that, that there are persons here who need to give up some grudges and forgive the grievances they have against someone else. Some need to forgive the grievances you have against your parents. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God is trying to, God is trying to say something to us. I don't care what kind of grievances you have against your parents. You only get one set of parents, biological parents, in your life. You can have, you can have 20 play mamas. You can have 15 adopted mamas or daddies. But you only get one set of biological parents in your life. And if you don't owe them anything else, you owe them for being here. And some of the, some of the, some of the grudges and some of the grievances that, that we as children, that, you know, whether we are grown or not, have against our parents as God, as God is challenging us today that we need to let some of those grievances and some of those grudges go. And then I just throw in this here, this here too. Some still holding some grudges and grievances against their parents, and the parents are dead and gone. And they still mad. What mama didn't do, what daddy didn't do. God is saying today, you need to let it go. You need to let it go. Brand new year, brand new opportunity to do some things. Uh, some need to some need to forgive forgive your children for the same reasons. Some need to forgive someone uh, for you know for you know for emotional or physical abuse. Some need to give up the grudge you have against some coworker because uh, you know of how they treated you. Some need to give up the grudge you have against other people uh, in this very congregation. Some need to give it up. Give up the grudge. What you holding? What you holding against the person? Let it go. I would think that if you know sometime there, you know, if we've been holding on to it for a whole year and they got no better, it's time to do something with it. If we haven't done anything with it in a whole year, then I think it's time for us to give it up to the Lord. Huh? God's just trying to God's just trying to help us in with these challenges today. See, because I know, you know, I know y'all been y'all been shouting for two weeks, so you didn't need to shout today. Now don't tell God, and then let me watch it. Don't tell God you can't forgive and give up those grudges because what you're really saying and what you really mean when you say, I, Lord, I can't, I just can't do it. You're really saying, I don't want to do it. I don't want to give it up. I don't want to forgive him. I don't want to let it go. Because anything that we really want to, anybody we really want to forgive, anything we really want to let go, God is powerful enough in order to grant us with the grace and the mercy in order to be able to do it. Anything that you are holding on to that is not pleasing to God, you are holding on to it because you want to.
to make that difficult decision to forgive, let go of grudges, and start the new year fresh. Start the new year fresh. And then third day, third day, third day, third day. Commit yourself to restore your relationships. Watch this. Every time I turn time out, I don't know about you, but every time I turn on, turn on my computer, a little window pops up that asks if I want to run, run a check to see if my programs are working properly. God, in his word, issues a very similar invitation. It's an invitation to check whether our personal relationships are working properly. Huh. Here's, how the Lord, here's how the Lord issues that challenge. Romans chapter 12, verse 18 says, if, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Watch this. The important phrase here is, as far as it depends on you. Uh, in other words, whatever is up to you, it's not about uh, whether it's up to the other person, but, but whatever you can do in order to make it happen, whatever, whatever response you can bring about. God, by using this, this phrase, is personally challenging uh, each one of us to do all we can do to restore relationships. Now, I know that's a, that's a challenge right there because whenever relationships are broken, uh, whether it's in the church uh, or on the job or whatever, most of us are sitting there waiting for the other person to come to us. But God is challenging us today. He said, as much as that depends on you. In other words, you do everything you can. You do everything you can. And see, if you're related to a relationship, whether it's friendship or marriage or whatever, if it's broken, if it's messed up, and you know that it is, and you ain't doing nothing, you're not doing all that you can in order for it to make a difference. And beloved, God is challenging us even in the, even in the church, with broken relationship in the church. He said, as much as it depends on you. If somebody has hurt your feelings and you ain't talking to them anymore, as much as it depends on you, to go to the person to say, hey, you hurt my feelings. Hey, I didn't like what I heard that you said about me. Is that true? Is this what, is, is this what I heard? Is that true? That's as much as it depends on you to live peacefully huh, with one another. Then when the word says here, as far as it is, it depends on you live at peace with, every, with everyone. It says if we have caused a rift, in a relationship when we have a, then we have a responsibility to do everything we can to restore it. Everything we can. If we have caused it. That everyone, everything, that everything uh, includes the one thing we all probably find most difficult. And that's to ask for forgiveness. You know, sometimes the lovers we can do when, when we have when we have when we think somebody has done something, said something, we have on, uh, we can act so ugly mm. until it becomes difficult to go and ask for forgiveness. Hey, boys. Huh? Hey, boys. But God is challenging us, God is challenging us today and to commit ourselves to restoring relationships that we know are messed up. We know they messed up. And we won't even try to restore them and yet we call ourselves 
children of God. Huh? Mm. Okay, you don't have to like me today. <laughs> but God is challenging us. And I know, I know there's folks right here in this congregation. Some of you looking at me now. Haven't spoken to some other people in this congregation in months last year. Something's wrong with that. And then we still come in church, lift up holy hands, you know, want to dance all over the sanctuary, and we haven't even tried to fix what God has asked us to fix. Something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with it. Then the fourth challenge, the fourth challenge said, you know, we'll be, we be, we be out of here. Commit yourself to turn your back on your transgressions. Listen to these words, Romans chapter 6, 12 and 13. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in his lust. 13. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Beloved, God is challenging us to commit to turning away from our transgressions, our sins, in 2015, if we were rise to this challenge, it will make a, a significant impact in our walk with the Lord through this year. It all boils down to this. Will this year be just a, a calendar uh, changing event for you uh, or uh, or are you willing to rise to these challenges from God's word and make these commitments so doing uh, so, and, and in so doing make this new this new year a life changing event. In other words, is it just a calendar changing event or is it going to be a life changing event? We have the opportunity not only just to flip the calendar over to a new year, but also to make some changes in our lives. When you commit to forget the past, your past of failures, when you commit yourself to give up your grudges, when you commit yourself to restore your relationship, when you commit yourself to turn your back on your transgressions, in other words, you don't have to continue to do the same and commit the same sins in 2015 that you made in 2014. You can decide to walk away from those sins in your lives. You don't have to keep doing them just because you were doing them, just because you was in them last week or last night. Don't mean that you have to go through 2015 in those same sins. But we have to make the commitments in order to change them. God is challenging us today to forgive ourselves and forget the past, to forgive others who have hurt us and let go of our grievances. He's challenging us to for, for forgiveness, to forgive, to forgive those that have hurt. He's challenging us to ask for forgiveness for the sins in our lives. Will you step up to the challenge for this brand new year? Not only, not only, every day is a new chance. But every year is a fresh opportunity to do something differently than you did the year before. God expects for us to get better as Christians as time goes on. So he keeps challenging us. He keeps challenging us. This year he's challenging.
challenging us. Not just that we're going to lose some weight. Not that we're going to get in better for better physical condition. But he's challenging us to gain some spiritual weight and become more physical, the more spiritually fit. What about you? Are you up to the challenge to make these commitments? Forget about the past junk. Huh? Fix some relationships. Restore. Forgive some grudges. Walk away from some sin in your life in 2015. As we look to the Lord, every head bow. Every head bow, every head bow, every head bow. If these challenges, if these challenges has come down your street and you need to make a commitment to one, to two, to three, to all four, nobody knows which one it is but you. Just slip your hand up for I pray real quick. Just slip your hand up. You know it came down your street. You know it came down your street. And you need to, you need to make this commitment. But you, you need the Lord's help in order to do it. Our Father, and our God, we come right now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for the challenge. Each one of us can find ourselves in one of these challenges. Now, oh Lord, God, shower us with your grace and your mercy that we might be strengthened to rise to the challenge with this new, this fresh opportunity of a brand new year. strength, must be courage into each life that we might answer the challenge that you have put before us with your help and with your strength in Jesus name Amen by chance, by chance, by chance we don't want to open by chance there may be someone here there may be someone here that came on this first day, this brand new year, that you want to start a new journey with the Lord. You want to start a new commitment with the Lord, with surrendering your life to give your life to Him. But to start this new year connected to a church ministry, if there's someone here, someone here need to surrender their lives to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died upon Calvary's cross for my sin. Come into my heart and save me. Anyone here that needs to do that on this brand new year, I extend this opportunity to you. Anyone here that needs to say, Lord, I want to be, I need to be connected to a local church ministry in this community to serve, to use my gifts, my talents. If there's anyone here, I extend this purpose, this opportunity to you. Is there one here? Are you sure? Pray 